Hello and welcome to the newspapers, the week in review. This is the show where we look at the weekly newspapers. My name is Mike Mendoza and each week I'll be here at this time with a special guest looking detail at stories that are hitting the headlines in our region. Well, my guest reviewer today is Councillor Bob Smitherman. Bob represents the Lib Dems on both Worthing Borough and West Sussex County Council. Last year, Bob was the Mayor of Worthing. At the end of his tenure was made the town crier of the borough. So welcome to you, Bob. Uh, hello, Mike. Good evening to you. You've had a fairly hectic time even since you've been Mayor. It is very, very busy in the town at the moment. Are you enjoying it? Loving it. It's absolutely yeah. fantastic. It's great going around in my full regalia, I'm ringing sure. the bell and sh shouting, oh, yeah, it's fabulous. I, I, I got to tell you guys that I had to fight him today because he wanted to wear all the gear today. And I said, no, this is a serious news show. You can't do it. OK, I'll do my best and uh, do a serious news review, Mike. That's very kind of you. Thank you. I mean, you do take your politics quite seriously, don't you? I do take politics very seriously. I've been on the council for some time. Um, I was just re-elected in, in May. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I've served 12 years on Word in Borough and um, I'm on my second term as a county councillor. That's good. I mean, West Sussex also is, is, is up and down these days. It is. Um, but certainly when I got elected in 2009, um, the Lib Dems were the main opposition on the council um, with the small Labour group. Actually, the Labour Party got a much larger group now, but actually the main opposition on the county council, of course, is UKIP. And, um, and actually we're quite a does small Does that surprise party. you? Um, it does hugely surprise me, really. Mm -hmm. um, um, and, and, you know, and that trend seems to be continuing. Um, over the last sort of year or so, really, with um, obviously um, a by-election win for UKIP in Worthing recently. So when 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 UKIP sort of, virtually, as you say, took second place at, at the West Sussex, did did Lib Dems lose a lot on that? Uh, yes, we lost a number of seats when I was first elected. I was one of twenty-one mm -hmm. um, Lib Dem councillors. No, you're one of one. Aren't you? And, uh, no, 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 we we we've, we've got a few more than that. I think we've got about half a dozen. I think, but it's um, yeah, it's 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 quite difficult for us really, and yeah. um, to, to to try and get that sort of liberal centre ground voice heard. Um, within, within local politics. I mean, the same thing happens, of course, both in Ada and Worthing, whereas Lib Dems were very, very strong years ago. Absolutely. Um, you know, um, I grew up in Ada, and um, Lib Dems um, were the first council in the country to introduce um, curbside recycling, um, you know, when we ran the council. And, of course, we've got no representation at all there now, as you would know. Uh -huh. Yes, very sad. <laughs> OK, let's move on to some of the stories that are making the locals this week. Uh, th this is an interesting one. 20 mile an hour uh, claims are misleading. Uh, Brighton and Hove City Council has been wrapped for making misleading claims about the benefits of 20 mile an hour speed limits. The council's been pulled up by the Advertising Standards Agency over leaflets distributed to residents ahead of the expansion of the 20 mile an hour limits uh, across the city. Now you also, also in your area, I, I, am I right to say you were bringing this into Worthing? I, you personally? Uh, so have you, are you misleading people as well? I'm certainly not misleading people, Mike. Actually, actually one of the things I did was the, I was the actual the proposer of the original motion mm -hmm. that actually brought forward. Um, but the, um, a, you're, you're a driver. Um, because actually I, I, I was persuaded by the, t the 20 mile an hour campaign that actually um, with, with public support actually roads would become safer. And what's, what's become apparent from the public consultation, obviously we've not made a final decision yet, but but what, you know, seeing the report, seeing the results of the consultation, it's quite apparent that there isn't that public support. And clearly, without the public support um, for, for, for reducing the speed limits, um, it, there's absolutely no way that councillors can support it. So um, I, I suspect it to be rejected wholeheartedly this week. Yeah. Uh, as as a matter of interest, I'm not sure if, if you can answer the question even, but I mean, the national speed limit is 30 miles an hour. Indeed. It's laid down around the country, 30 miles an hour is the, is, is, is the limit. How can a local authority suddenly decide 20 is going to be the limit? Um, I th I th um, as I understand it, um, the Department of Transport have changed the rules mm -hmm. and with public support, there, there is legislation in place where there's the public support. Um, and I understand from, the, from talking to the 20s plenty campaign and certainly as county councillors, we've received mm -hmm. um, a presentation some time ago um, in which they told us that actually that um, enforcers wasn't needed to reduce the speed limit. Yeah. Actually with community support, slower speed limits would improve the safety of the area. Of course, in Brighton and Hove, of course, they've had um, 20, 20 mile an hour limits for some time. Um, obviously, we were right to go to public consultation, in my view, in Worthing. Um, it's quite clear from the results of what has been a very good, robust co consultation, mm -hmm. um, where people actually had to actually send a card back with their address, rather than sort of, you know, on, online sort of voting, yeah, sure. which is often yeah. open to abuse. I mean, I mean is, is it enforceable? 
Um, th- 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 my understanding is from talking to the 20 mile an hour campaign, actually the success of the areas it works is actually enforcement is not the idea. Yeah. It's actually where people want it's to drive slower. Awareness, and yeah, absolutely, it's about awareness and, p- and p- people drive slower. But clearly without the public support, and obviously it was a, a very big turnout in the consultation, mm-hmm. almost 70%, um, with two thirds of those 70 saying they don't want it, then clearly um, there isn't the community support, and clearly councillors shouldn't vote for it. Uh, and apparently, there's been no prosecutions at all of people going over the 20 miles an hour limit in, in Brighton. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, I know ACPO have got very clear guidance on 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 how they um, approach. Um, the, the enforcement side of 20 mile an hour limits and um, so yeah it's, it's going to be quite an interesting meeting I think on Wednesday but um, I think one of the things that's worth noting um, um, in Worthing where we had the consultation we were one of the few areas in the country where there was a 20 pl- pointless campaign as well as a 20 yeah. anti pro campaign and I think uh, ha- having, I, having the two sides. Can I declare my interest because I would certainly support those against it. Uh, let's move on <laughs> yes. to story number two. Uh, you, you're a bit of a comedian, well, you think you are. Uh, Joker's <laughs> spoof plans to transform the county. This is a very funny story actually. It's about a guy who's putting up spoof planning notices around Brighton and Hove and some of them really are funny. Uh, he's a- he is actually a comedian. Um, <laughs> uh, his name is Phil Lucas. He took to the streets of Brighton and Hove to post the wacky planning posters proposing everything from a 40 metre high otter's head uh, off Brighton Beach to a museum of taxidermy to replace Jamie Oliver's famous cafe in Western Road. Uh, I mean some of these are really really funny like, like a special tribute uh, to, to of various well-known people around the country. Uh, I mean, what would you think? Would you, would you do that sort of thing as a joke? Um, I'm not sure. Um, as, as, a, as, you, as you said in the introduction, Mike, I am quite a serious counsellor, despite the, the fact that I do have, have a bit of a joke from time to time. Um, so yes, no, I don't think this is something that I would do, but actually it is very funny. And, and actually, I think actually as counsellors, I think we do have to lighten up a bit and, um, and, and take these sort of things in, in, in with, with the humour that they're meant, really. And um, all credit to Phil, I think, I think actually this is, this is quite a lot of fun. Um, it'd be quite interesting to talk to some of my council colleagues in Brighton um, to, to, to see how they react. Um, so, so certainly our planning committee have some very strange applications from time to time, but I don't ever recall seeing anything quite as funny as this really. So yes, I mean, I think a Bruce Forsyth uh, tribute would be quite nice, which is what he's proposing. I think in Palmer Hill Square, dig it up and put a, a tribute to uh, Bruce Forsyth. Uh, yeah. Let's move on to another story. This is from the Argus. Uh, bus drivers ready to strike if bosses don't up pay offer. Uh, Uh, This is a general thing, and uh, I have discussed this before, and I've been talking about it for years and years Mm. on my radio shows. Why is it unions can hold people to, really, to to, to ransom, which is what they're doing? When you take on a job, you know exactly how much you're getting paid. Why suddenly do you want to change the the, the goalposts? Absolutely, uh, absolutely. And and I I haven't looked at the detail of this. Um, I'm I'm a big supporter of unions. I think it's it's important that actually workers aren't exploited. But I think bus drivers do need to be very careful here. Um, I think, you know, sometimes you have to be a little bit careful what you wish for. And actually, if they push for this pay rise and, and, you know, with pressure, were successful in getting it, Mm -hmm. actually, they could in a few years' time find themselves without a job. So I think um, you have to be sometimes a bit careful what you wish for. Um, But you you, you, you put your county hat on this one because you're responsible for bus passes and all the other businesses. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, and I th- and I think you, you know the, the the bus companies are commercial entities, um, and it's really important that actually you know these bus drivers are providing a really important service to our residents in the county. Um, but but but, but they, they yes they need to have you know a, a market rate for you know for, for the wage that they get. Um, but I think yeah they do have to be a bit careful what they wish for when they push for a pay rise. Okay, another story before the break. Before floods and forty mile an hour winds uh, this morning when we uh, were, were talking to each other earlier this morning, mm-hmm. uh, it was terrible. It was absolutely bucketing down. We, we had uh, quite a lot of flooding coming, coming into Brighton this afternoon as well. So, again, this is, this is a whole thing. For the last couple of years, we've had some appalling weather. But surely we should be well prepared for this. I know that a lot of money has suddenly been promised uh, for flood defences mm. and, and to make sure we don't have the flooding we've been having in the past. Yep. But it's not going to be mu- due or it's not going to come to us for another couple of years. Absolutely, I totally agree with you, Mike. I, th- I think this is, um, the, the, the government have been well aware of this. Um, certainly my own division um, at, at Haring is probably one of the worst areas affected in Worthing. I know parts of Shoreham um, dri- driving over to the studios today. Um, you know, some re- really, really very, very poor areas 
um, of, a, of drainage. Um, so, so who's to blame for this? Is this the water board? Um, I think it probably is the water board. Certainly in, in my area, the drains are very badly blocked. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I, I often sort of send them an email and we, and we get them blocked. But I think the county council also have a responsibility as well for making sure that actually leaves are cleared. But I think there's, a, there's another big issue here, which I think is very, very important. I, um, um, a lot of your viewers may know that I do a lot of work for leasehold flat owners and, um, and, and obtaining um, insurance. Um, in flood risk areas is very tricky. Mm. The government have introduced the flood risk scheme, um, flood reinsurance, and um, I met recently with um, the Lib Dem flood minister, um, Dan Rogerson, and um, trying to persuade him that actually, if you live in a block of flats, actually you should be able to access this scheme in the same way as um, ordinary freehold um, owners are. So <coughs> I think that the government have got a huge amount of work to do here yeah. to make sure that actually, A, we're protected from flooding in the first place, um, but, but, but actually, you know, yes, if there are freak weathers, actually it's really important that actually um, homeowners can be properly insured. I mean, I, I know in parts of Shoreham, the, the main sewer is only six inches big, large. Yeah. I mean, six inches is nothing taking thousands of homes. Absolutely. Plus the flood water on top of that. Absolutely. You see in the water that, you know, we, we, we drove through here today is, you know, actually there's a huge amount of water coming down in very short periods of time. And like you say, six inches is just not enough. And um, so um, our, our old fashioned drainage system um, that have been, been in place a long time is, isn't you know, able to cope with the sort of freak weather conditions. OK, we time for a break. Us. When we return, we look at other stories that are hitting the headlines in our region. This is the newspapers and the Week in Review. My special guest, Bob Smitherman, back after the break. Well, welcome back to the newspapers and the Week in Review with me, Mike Mendoza. My guest, Bob Smitherman, Lib Dem councillor on both Worthing Borough Council and West Sussex County Council. Uh, and he's also, of course, the town crier in Worthing as well. Although he has sneaked over to the Shoreham area a few times wearing always regalia. Uh, yes. uh, we do try and throw him out, but he keeps coming back again. <laughs> OK, Bob, let's look at the, the front page of the Argus. And it's not very often in the last few weeks we managed to get front pages because some of them have been pretty awful. Mm. Uh, but UKIP sets sights on Sussex. Uh, the declaration is there, isn't it? They, they seem to have every seat uh, they're going to go for in the general election, which is only six months away now. Mm. Uh, how do you feel about that? I mean, you again on West Sussex, we mentioned it earlier. Yep. West Sussex are the second, uh, UKIP are the biggest, second biggest uh, they're, party they're on they're West the Sussex. They're the main opposition on the county council. Mm, yeah. um, that they're clearly doing very well. Um, I was the only Lib Dem to manage to defend my seat back in May. Um, it's normally a marginal seat between myself and the Conservatives, and um, UKIP were less than 50 votes away from taking my seat, um, d despite me being fairly high profile in the. Um, the last year. Um, yeah, it's, it's, for, for me as a liberal, um, as somebody on the centre ground, I consider myself to be on the kind of the sort of centre ground of politics. I think this is really quite worrying because I think you've got the Conservatives that are sort of moving off to the right to deal with the UKIP threat. Um, you, you know, um, UKIP have got, you know, certainly from my perspective, we've got some pretty strange policies, um, which, which I can't subscribe to at all. Um, Labour, of course, because of what's happened in Scotland um, and, you know, the um, SNP going to the left, um, the Labour Party is shooting off to the left to deal with that. And actually that's leaving a gaping hole in the central politics, which has historically has been occupied by ourselves as Lib Dems. Um, but clearly, um, you know, with going into coalition nationally, that's had a real impact on our party's fortunes. Were you upset about the coalition? Uh, no, I was a big fan of the coalition. I, yep. think, I, I think Nick Clay did the right thing. Um, I, th I don't think there was any choice. It was quite clear that Gordon Brown had lost the election. Um, the largest party was the Conservatives. They, you know, the, the, the country needed stability. Um, and I think Nick Clegg and the Lib Dems were absolutely right um, to, you know, to, to, to go into coalition. But as the... As the as You've the, seen the cracks now, though, aren't you? Oh, very much so. And um, as the minority party, you know, what, you know, what, what we've suffered. And, and clearly what, what UKIP are very cleverly doing is actually exploiting the position that we used to occupy, which is very much a kind of protest vote. And, um, and, and UKIP are sort of going for that. And it's clear in Sussex they're doing the same, which has obviously been historic you know, a, a, a pretty a pretty safe conservative area, with a few notable exceptions, um, with my friends um, um, Norman Baker in Lewis and, uh, and Stephen Lloyd down in Eastbourne. Um, so yeah, it's going to be it's going to be very interesting to see what happens um, in the, in the forthcoming general election in May. Okay. Uh, next uh, headline also from the Argus, and uh, possibly something you as a Lib Dem would approve. Of course, your group in Worthing has spearheaded energy deals, and the headline here is energy deal to shave 200 pounds off bills. Uh, this is uh, an energy provider is promising to shave 200 pounds off people's annual electricity and gas bills by putting control into the hands of communities. And this has been very much your policy. Hasn't Absolutely, it? very much. Mm. Very much so. Our candidate in the next general election, Hazel Thorpe, or 
believe was, was with you recently, um, actually um, proposed to the council that we introduce a collective switching scheme, which is very much our party nationally, under a Davy, our Secretary of State. Um, so I think anything that we can do, um, both locally as well as nationally, to actually um, help consumers by reducing their energy bill, which, um, you know, with, with the cold winters and uh, the cold nights ahead, I think is only a good thing, really. And, um, and I would definitely encourage any of your viewers, Mike, to actually, you know, look in detail at their bill and actually look at our local collective switching scheme um, and, and see whether you really can make savings, because I, I generally believe there are huge savings to be made. But should local authorities be getting involved in this? Um, I, think, I, th I think they very much should, but Mike, I think, I, you know, my own view is, you know, what, what, you know we as local councillors should be community leaders and community champions, and I think this is very much something that local councillors should be doing locally, mm. because there's a huge distrust of um, national politicians, um, and actually I think any, anything that we can do to actually engage locally I think can be a good thing. I, I think it's, it's very important to shop around. There's, there's no bonus for loyalty I've noticed, amongst, certainly amongst insurance companies. Mm. Uh, I'm sure you're aware, every year you get your house, your house yeah. insurance, you get your car insurance, and it's going up and up and up. But the minute you shop around, it goes down and down and down. Yeah. Last year I saved £800 by cancelling all my policies and starting new ones as a first time customer. Yeah, so I, th I, th I think you're absolutely right. I think, I think it's one of the things I think that I certainly find frustrating as you do, and I think all your viewers would find frustrating. Actually, there is, appears to be, no reward for loyalty. Mm. I think that started to change, and, um, and I think we as you know, MPs and councillors, I think we need to make sure that, you know, whether it be insurance companies, energy companies, banks, you know, actually we should start rewarding because actually people lead very busy lives. They don't want to co constantly be chopping and changing. I know I, I switched my energy co um, company a few years ago and um, within, within sort of six, eight months, actually it was back up to my previous energy company. Um, things are starting to change, but there's a long way to go. Okay, let's look at another story. Uh, solving Sussex's big pothole problem. And again, you with your West Sussex County Council hat on. Mm. Uh, Council chiefs believe they've the answer to Sussex's uh, perennial pothole problem. Uh, apparently over two and a half thousand holes still outstanding to be filled. But so far you're actually filled, would you believe, 85 and a half thousand potholes. Absolutely. I, I know this is actually an East Sussex story. Mm -hmm. um, and East Sussex are very much, I think, playing catch up here from what I read for the story. Certainly West Sussex, when I was first elected about four or five years ago, found ourselves in this position where we had a massive backlog in West Sussex for um, potholes. Um, and, and East Sussex seemed to be very much in the position we were. And I really hope that actually East Sussex do what we did um, and actually make sure we actually allocate you know a specific pot of money so actually we can actually start fast tracking some of these um, highway works um, it's, it's clearly you know we've, we've got my as East Sussex have we've got miles and miles of, um, of road network. Both You've got the A27, and, um, of course, is a massive and, problem for and you. Of course, that's yeah. not the responsibility of the county council, of course. Mm. That'd be the highways agency. But um, certainly, um, you know, um, the, the roads that we are responsible for, we've got a, a, a huge network, both urban and rural, that take a real battering, particularly as people avoid the A27 because of the congestion. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And of course, that has a knock-on impact. But, but the, the weather doesn't well. help. You know, we've been promised a lot of snow and ice this year. Uh, yep. We've got that to look forward to. Uh, we have had it the last couple of years, and that has caused massive problems. It has indeed, and we've been very fortunate in West Sussex the last few years, and I'm sure East Sussex is the same, where actually the government have stepped in when the weather's been bad. And I really hope if the weather's bad again this year that um, the Department of Transport will indeed step in. And um, obviously I'm hugely grateful to my colleague Norman Baker, because um, obviously during his time um, in the Department of Transport, he was very supportive of providing that extra money for um, okay. um, solving potholes. Uh, again, with your West Sussex hat on, uh, airport traffic up 20 months uh, straight. And we also hear that the new Gatwick runway could cost £2 billion more. And of course, West Sussex are responsible for Gatwick Airport. Indeed. And, and, and this is one of those stories where I, I probably go, have to probably go across, um, off the political line, really. Um, um, our recent conference, the Lib Dems voted against no more airport expansion um, oh, really? anywhere, anywhere in the southeast, mm. which I think was a, you know, a huge mistake. I agree with them. Um, Jeremy Brown, um, our, our, our former minister, and a number of our, our sort of colleagues, that actually we do need to expand our airports. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, a, you know, as a, as a Sussex councillor, I believe actually Gatwick will be create a huge opportunity if we had that um, runway at Gatwick. Uh, the legal agreement was in place rightly up until 2019, and that, um, we're, we're obviously getting close to that now. We need to start planning for that, and, um, and the, the, the sooner we actually 
you know, but, but build that second runway at Gatwick, the, you know, the more jobs we can create and, and, and actually deal with the, um, the aviation demand, really. OK, let's just move on to another one. I want to get a couple more stories in. And time, of course, runs so fast on this programme. Uh, patients wait hours for eye appointments. And this is Worthing Hospital. Yeah, this is... Yeah. I have to say, this is personally a very worrying story. Um, many of your viewers may know I'm actually the president of um, the Worthing Society for the Blind, which is actually um, Worthing's oldest um, charity, um, over 100 years old and um, supporting people who are blind or visually impaired. Um, I myself have had a number of eye operations, having been born with a squint um, some years ago. And um, yeah, it's really quite worrying. And um, I'd like to congratulate Health West Sussex, actually, who are the watchdog for actually highlighting things like this, because actually our commissioners really do need to address this very important issue. Is, is that department particularly bad? Um, um, it certainly appears to be here from what West, um, Health Watch West Sussex have highlighted. I certainly wasn't aware of this, Mike, until I um, obviously p picked up the story from the Argus. Um, so um, I, I congratulate Health West, West, West Sussex, but, the, but I really hope that the, um, the doctors in the, within the cl clinical commissioning group, the CCG, actually are looking very closely at this. And I will continue to work with my um, trustees at Worthing Society for the Blind Thank to you. make sure we get a better deal for um, people who are blind and visually um, impaired. J just to confuse my colleagues who are working in, in the other room at the moment, who are working all, all the controls around us, yeah. uh, I want to jump a story and, and not do the next one we're going to do. I'm going to jump onto the last one, uh, which was County wins 350 £50,000 to fight child abuse. Again, this is West Sussex. Um, but £350,000 to fight child... Why, why do they need the money? Why are they not fighting child abuse anyway? I, 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 what I are they gonna do? They're going to stand back and you, you abuse children so we get the money. Absolutely. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. Here. Yeah, I'm actually a member of the corporate parenting panel as a corporate parent of the, on, the, on the county council. This is something that we should be doing. Um, West Sussex um, are actually in a better position now than we were when I first got elected to the county council. Um, that v many of your viewers might will remember that w um, we were actually found to be inadequate by Ofsted um, in West Sussex and um, um, fortunately um, we came out but we're expecting an Ofsted inspection at any time um, and um, yeah it's, it's this, this is a really strange story it's um, it's right that child abuse were you aware of that by the way I, I wasn't until I picked up the Argus this week I mm -hmm. wasn't aware of this um, but, but 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 obviously I'm aware of obviously a lot of things going on nationally and obviously what we're doing locally at West Sussex to prepare for Ofsted um, and we've got a lot of preparation to do really um, okay sadly we've run out of time uh, my grateful thanks to Councillor Bob Smitherman for joining me today Bob I hope to see you back here so I'm sure you'll come back thank you um, I'd love I'm to, back Mike. next time for another edition of the newspapers in the week review here on latest tv with another special guest next week i'm joined by the reverend peter dennett bye for now see you next time thanks bob thank you